Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Hey guys, Amber here with the Maple Family, and today I'm going to talk to you about our top 10 plays of August as a family. Now, I always like to start out the beginning of the month with my solo playthroughs. So if you haven't checked out that video, you can check that out. I will put a link to it in the description of this video. And of course, if you guys haven't already subscribed, I would love to have you join our little community here and you'll be notified when I launch new videos. And be sure to give this one a thumbs up. That really helps us out and helps our channel grow. So unlike my solo playthroughs, this is going to highlight the games that we played together as a family in the month of August. Now, August was kind of a crazy month for us because we did start school and we had a ton of activities, a little bit of traveling. So these were definitely lighter games that we got to the table, but nonetheless, I'm super excited to share them with you and hopefully give you some ideas of some games that you and your family can play around the table as well. Now, one of our absolute top plays, without a doubt, hands down for the month of August was Cafe Chaos. So I picked this game up kind of on a whim. I saw it on clearance at Target and I was like, ah, whatever, this looks like a cute game got it home, you know, quickly learned how to play and the kids have been obsessed with it. So it's a little bit of a deck builder and you pick out different actions and the theme of it is you're throwing these crazy combinations of food at each other. And in addition to that, you kind of all have these different characters that you play in the lunchroom and they all have asymmetric abilities. It's wild, it's wacky, and the artwork is really quite adorable. Um, so it's been a really fun one to play around the table. Usually after dinner, we will play a game game or two of that and it's just always a hit. Next up on my list is a newer game that came out. Um, I saw at Gen Con called A Goofy Movie. So this goes back like to my childhood watching a goofy movie. And so I definitely, it was one of those things where like you're reliving your childhood and things you love through your kids and like forcing it upon them. So I definitely forced this game upon my family, but it actually ended up being a really fun set collection game. So in a goofy movie game, you're actually moving and trying to get to the concert in Los Angeles. And throughout your road trip journey, you're collecting scrapbook cards in a variety of different ways. And these scrapbook cards are actually actually how the set collection works, different sets earn you different points at the end of the game. Super simple game, but so fun, so cute. And at least I thought the theme was outstanding. I mean, I felt like I was like watching the Goofy movie. And this is one of those two, like you can watch the Goofy movie and then play the game or play the game, then watch the movie. I just think it makes for a really fun like family event. So Highly recommend a Goofy movie, it's such a cute game. I think the age on that is like seven and up. So I'm talking like, this is a really simple game, but it's very fun and very cute. Another Funko game that we checked out during the month of August is Big Thunder Mountain. Now, if you're not familiar with this, this is actually a theme park ride that Disney has at their parks. So there's definitely some like sentimental memories for me tied to this particular ride. So that could sway how much I liked this game, but this game is basically a deck builder game. And the way you score points is you move your little mine cart around the mountain and you collect gold and ore and you turn in water and you can get upgrades. There's all these different mechanisms in the game that are going to help you improve your game and score better points or a higher score at the end of the gameplay. So this one in particular, I really enjoyed the gameplay. I enjoyed playing this one with my kids. I thought, wow, Wow, this is really great but and there is like a big but here the mountain thing that you spin to bring the marbles down I couldn't handle it because it was like this really cheap plastic and you're grinding this mountain on the cheap plastic so it's just like er, 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 okay like I'll spare you it ruined the game for me and not only that but our mountain was all warped and like janky so all the marbles kept like falling to one side of mountain. Like I, the first few times we played it, I tried to just like ignore the fact that this mountain marble thing was so like nails on a chalkboard. That's all I could say. It's like nails on a chalkboard. And then also trying to be like, oh, okay, like the right side of the mountain is overflowing with marbles and we can never get anything to go to the left side because of it's it's like all warped. I don't know if I just got a really bad copy. What makes me sad is that the gameplay actually I thought was really well done minus this running of the marbles down the warped mountain. I was really disappointed in that and I feel like this could have been so cool if they would have done something a little more sturdy and reliable. Maybe I got a bum copy, I'm not sure, but the gameplay was fun. I just think 
it could have been done better. I actually ended up returning this game. Let me know if you guys have tried this game out and if your copy was weird, then maybe that was just like bad manufacturing. Well, another one we played during the month of August was Haunted Mansion. I don't know why we played so many Funko games during August. I think just they're a lighter weight game and they're just kind of thematic and fun and bright and cheery to get to the table. Well, maybe not Haunted Mansion, but again, this is a ride at the Disney theme parks. This one is similar to the Goofy movie game, but it's like elevated. There's a little bit more strategy, a little bit more take that um, than the Goofy movie. So that's definitely geared towards a younger audience where this one, we had like Josh and I played this one together and we had a lot of fun playing it. And if you love the ride, it's kind of a fun way to immerse yourself in the theme of the Haunted Mansion without actually obviously being at Disney and riding it. Next up is another lightweight game we played, Downtown Farmer's Market, and this is put out by Blue Orange Games. So in this one, it kind of reminds me of Village Green, if you guys have played that one. You're building like a right angle of objectives, so you've got like four going down and four going across, and inside of that, you're trying to fulfill objectives and score points for your horizontal and your vertical objectives. Very similar to Village Green, which is a card game I love. So I did have the opportunity to play this with Josh, and I played with a couple of my kids, and this one is just right on the cusp of giving just a little bit too much analysis paralysis for kids, I think. Now the designer also came out with like a younger audience gameplay, so you can always try that as well. But this game is also just so easy to teach people, so you can kind of throw it in your bag. It's small and take it anywhere and, you know, have a game, go visit the farmer's market collect your corn and milk and eggs and bread and cheese and see how you do. Now, another one that I got to the table that's actually a two player game and I played this several times with Josh and my oldest son was called Mandala and I had just picked this one up and I was really excited to try it out and see what it was all about. So in this game, you're actually building these really colorful mandalas. The neat thing about it is that colors can only show up like certain times and certain places depending on who initiates them in the mandala. So once colors are brought into the mandala, it kind of restricts you from putting them other places. And once all colors are brought to life in this mandala, then scoring happens and the mandala resets. So there's a lot of turnover, a lot of change, and you're constantly trying to strategize how to accrue points in the game because as you acquire different colors, each one is going to be put in a different value for you throughout the game. I'm definitely going to do a how to play on this one because it is such a fun game and I definitely want to give it some more attention because it is a great two-player option if you're looking for that for the month of September. All right, next up, I actually have the game right here. It is Return of the Headless Horseman, and it's another Funko game. I don't know why we played so many of these. I'm just a sucker for these Disney games. They're like, oh, hey, we're selling Disney games. I'm like, great, I'll buy all of them. So here we go. Bought this one too. So this game is a cooperative game where you're trying to outrun the Headless Horseman and you play as Ichabod. And when I say you, I mean like the, the cooperative team plays as Ichabod. I played this several times with my kids and it was a hit. They loved it. And I know they love it because as soon as we get done, they're like, can we play again? Can we play again? And they just like kept talking about it for days. So it hit that nice spot where my six-year-old could play with us because there's not a lot of reading. The turns are really simple. It's a little bit random. I mean, it can be strategic, but with kids, it can be random and it can still be fun. Uh, so that was a really nice element as well. This was one we played a lot during the month of August, and I only see gameplay for this escalating, especially as we near uh, like the Halloween season. <laughs> I see us playing this and Haunted Mansion quite a bit. All right, well, next up from Ninja Star Games, we played Reputation. Now, I'm not usually a big fan of like auction bidding games, but this one is really unique because you have a private sector project and a public sector project. And as you're bidding, you're like having to move coins over to the other one. So it's just the gameplay in this one is really intriguing and it's so well done. I'm looking forward to playing this one more in September. I think this is definitely like a hidden gem and not a lot of people know about it. The reputation is one that we've really enjoyed playing and it doesn't take too long to play. There is kind of a countdown in the game because you only have so many projects revealed. The other interesting thing about this game and hence the name is like you're building reputation. So 
you don't want to be like the the worst player, like no one likes you and you have a terrible reputation, but you want to be like the second worst <laughs> because you're going to get more points and like win the game. So it's a really interesting balance to try to keep track of like your reputation, but also where everyone else is because whoever like at the end of the game has the lowest reputation, they're just eliminated. Like they don't even get to like put their hat in the ring to add up their score. Basically everything you did doesn't matter. <laughs> so it's a, it's an interesting gameplay, a lot of strategy, a lot of memory work, and also a little bit of risk and like push your luck, you know, wondering how far you can push your opponents. Very fun game, really great one. I'm looking forward to doing more about this game on the channel because I really do enjoy it. The hard thing with it is it is, a three to five player game. So you do need that solid three players to really like play this one. So I know that can be a hang up for a lot of people. So Josh and I actually played with my son and us three played and it was, it was really fun. It's a fun game. So something a little bit different, but that was reputation and we really enjoyed playing that through the month of August. Next up on my list is a lovely little polyomino game called Subway Squeeze. So this is another one I picked up from Target and I bought it because of the artwork on the front cover. I really thought about it and I was like, that is really adorable and I'm just gonna buy it. So it was a very well thought out purchase to say the least. Well, I was pleasantly surprised when I got the game home and found out just as cute as the cover was, it had a great gameplay. And I am gonna be doing a how to play on this one because it is so adorable. So the theme of this one is you are taking passengers into your subway cart and you have to be strategic about how you place them and who you put together because that's how you're gonna score points. So it's really simple gameplay, which I love, makes it really easy to teach, and it's just fun, quick polyomino game. That's all I can say about it with some unique scoring attributes and the components are all great. Uh, I love the artwork. It's so pleasant and so colorful and cute. Um, so this is definitely one I was pleasantly surprised with. Uh, and it didn't bite me in the butt because I literally knew nothing about the game. I just picked it up based on the box cover. So well done, well done with the artwork. It, I bought it. And that's Subway Squeeze. Now I actually have two more for you, um, which I kind of briefly already talked about on my solo channel, but I did play them a lot multiplayer as well. And that is Red Cathedral and Wormholes. And I have talked to you guys at length about these games, so I will not go on about them in detail, except to tell you that Red Cathedral is probably my most favorite game ever. And Wormholes is a pickup and delivery game that is themed in outer space and it is also really fun to play multiplayer. Well, that wraps up our family's board gaming for the month of August, at least our top 10, 11 plays anyway. August was definitely a crazy month and I am looking forward to what September has in store. I'm excited, I think like in September, October, November, like just diving into some of my favorite games and just kind of, you know, taking it a little deeper, maybe trying out some variations that games offer, things like that. That's kind of what I've been feeling like I want to do. Um, you know, I'm not really buying any more board games, so it's been fun to just kind of look at what I have on my shelves and decide and make a plan of like, oh, these are the games I really want to play for September, not only solo, but with my family. So I did put a shout out on my solo video to ask you guys to comment like what your plays were for the month of August, but also what you're looking forward to playing and focusing on for September. So in the same regard, uh, I would love to know what games you're looking forward to really getting to your table in September, but also what were your favorite games that like gave you the most memory in August? I always think it's fun to reminisce and think about the memories that we had with our families around the table. I mean, those, that's like what it's all about, right? So for me anyway, I love making those memories around the table and just being intentional to spend that time with the people that I love. So I'd love for you guys to maybe like, tell me in the comments below some moments you had with your family or games that like brought you together and maybe some things you're looking forward to playing or gathering around doing in September. Well, as always, thank you guys so much for taking time to watch and comment. It means the world to me. And I just have fallen in love with this board game community. I cannot believe how welcoming and kind everyone is. And I definitely hope you guys feel that for me. I just feel like kindness is contagious and I definitely want to bring that from my channel and that you guys feel welcome here and a part of this community. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you later. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes